Alex, I want to pivot, if we've got a few more minutes, to a topic that you and I spend a lot of time talking about these days. Um, and so by way of disclosure, you, you sort of noted that you've, you know, left uh, Illumina somewhat recently. You've started another company. Uh, I'm involved in that company as both an investor and an advisor, and it's an incredibly fascinating um, uh, subject. But um, one of the things that that we talk about a lot is the going back to this the role of the epigenome, right? So uh, I think you did a great job explaining it and putting it in context, right? So we've got these three billion base pairs, and lo and behold, some 28 million of them also happen to have a methyl group on their C. Um, I'll fill in a few more details that we didn't discuss on the podcast, but just to, to throw it out there, as a general rule, when we're born, we have kind of our max set of them. And as we age, we tend to lose them. So in a, as, as a person ages, the number of those methylation sites goes down. You obviously explain most importantly what they do, what we believe their most important purpose is, which is to impact gene expression. It's worth also pointing out that there are many hallmarks of aging. There are many things that are really believed to be at the fundamental level that describes why you and I today look and function entirely different from the day we, from the way we did when we met 25 years ago. We're just, we're, we're half the men we used to be. Um, I could make a Laplace Fourier joke there, but I will refrain. Um, so I guess the question is, Alex, where do you think methylation fits in to the biology of aging? That's a, that's a macro question, but. Yeah. yeah. So, so you talked about the hallmarks of aging. Um, uh, you know, and, uh, it, it was, uh, who's the author who, who I think it was Hanrahan, um, came up with that about 10 years ago, this hallmarks of aging. And he recently gave a talk where he talked about perhaps, uh, methylation is the hallmark of hallmarks of, of, of aging. Um, and what he's referring to is that the mounting data that um, the epigenetic changes are, are the most descriptive of aging um, and are becoming more and more causally linked to uh, to, uh, to 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 aging events. Yeah. There's lots of data that show that people of comparable age but different health status, for example, smokers versus non-smokers, people who exercise versus people who don't, people who are obese versus people who are not can have very different methylation patterns. Um, there's also some data that look at centenarians um, relative to non-centenarians. Um, and obviously that's a complicated analysis because by definition there's a difference in age, but you get a sense of different patterns of methylation. And clearly centenarians we've established long ago do not acquire their centenarian status by their behaviors, right? Just look at Charlie Munger and Henry Kissinger, uh, you know, two people who recently passed away at, at basically the age of 100, despite no evidence whatsoever that they did anything to take care of themselves. Um, so clearly their biology and their genes are very protective. Um, as you said, there are a bunch of these hallmarks, right? I think the original paper talked about nine and that's been somewhat expanded. Um, but you, you, you share that view, I suppose, that the epigenome sits at the top and that potentially it's the one that's impacting the other. So when we think about mitochondrial dysfunction, which no one would dispute, mine and yours are nowhere near as good as they were 25 years ago. Our nutrient sensing pathways, inflammation, all of these things are moving in the wrong direction as we age. How do you think those tie to methylation and to the epigenome and to gene expression by extension? You know, I think maybe let's reduce it to like a kind of an engineering framework. So if we took um, Peter's epigenome from 25 years ago when I first met you, right? And we knew for you know, every cell type and every cell 
Um, what was the methylation status at all 28 million positions? We had recorded that and we took yours uh, today where um, most of those cells have deviated from that and we could flip all those states back, right? We said, look, you know, um, and, and that's, that's kind of how I think about it is the sites don't go away, just whether or not they have the methyl group or not um, changes. Um, and some places gain it, some places lose it. Um, if we could flip all those back, would that force the cell to behave like it was 25 years ago? Um, express genes, uh, the fidelity with which it controlled those genes, uh, the interplay between them, would it, would, it, um, would it be reprogrammed back to that state? Um, and so, you know, that I think is a really provocative hypothesis. We don't know that for sure. But there's more and more evidence that that might be possible. And so to, to me, that's the, the burning question is now that we have the ability to characterize that and we know what it looks like um, in a higher functioning state, which is, you know, correlates with youth, and we are gaining technologies to be able to modulate that um, and actually change the epigenome as opposed to modifying proteins or gene expressions, but actually go in and remethylate and demethylate certain sites. Um, can we kind of reprogram things back to that earlier state? And, and if it is the root level at which things are controlled, will you then get, um, uh, you know, the, uh, all of the other features that, that the, the cell had and the organism had. So I think that's the, that's a really exciting question to, to answer. And just because if the answer is yes, or even partially yes, then it gives us a really concrete way to go about this. Um, and so I, I think you, you alluded, we talked about the hallmarks and the hallmarks are complex and interrelated. What, what I like about the epigenome is we can read it out and we're gaining the ability to modify it directly. So if really it's the more fun, the most fundamental level at which all of these other things are controlled. It, it gives us, again, maybe back to the early discussion, a very straightforward engineering way to go about this. Thank you.